how we should go about changing girls' perception of STEM or STEM-related subjects and their appreciation for it. Um, and I wanted to start for the first half of that. What seemed to work with me for appreciating that kind of stuff. We do need role models. Absolutely agree with that 100%. I was fortunate. Um, my father was very tech savvy. Uh, he worked on computers within, uh, over in Agway back when he was alive. Um, whatever management role, but I know he had a lot of uh, tech experience. So uh, we got to incorporate that from everything from, you know, me, my sister, and him playing video games. You know, Super Nintendo was our first system, so when I was like three or four, playing Super Mario World with him. And, um, you know, there's actually been found several benefits of gaming. Um, which I'll get into in a minute here, looking at my notes. But yeah, having a parent who, and I believe Dad had been a math major in college too, so there were times he was trying to help me with my math homework as well when I started getting the honors courses. Um, of course, his style was different than the teacher's, so that just double confused me. <laughs> um, yeah, things like, you know, how to use basic word programs, shortcuts for the computer, back when we were playing Neopets when that was new, learning, oh, F5 is how you quick refresh so you can steal whatever the giving tree has faster than anyone else. Or uh, when we got The Sims, um, he had found a way to, because you know how they have the radio and you can have them listen to different stations, he found a way to program a song that we had found into one of those stations so it would play. Of course, it also taught us that, you know, that would cause great uh, lag and slowing down the program's... Um, runtime because of that, um, which is, you know, teachable moment of, in and of itself, as teachers always like to say when something goes wrong. <laughs> it's true, though. Um, and, you know, just that allowed to give me early exposure to graphics, 3D modeling, and, you know, the potential of the digital world through these games, you know? Um, and speaking of role models, you know, there was one thing I really adored back in the 2017 Game Awards, uh, the Industry Icon Award, Carol Shaw, way back in, like, Atari generation, the original Atari generation of games, uh, she was there, you know, in the early era of modern gaming, um, designing, making every, uh, it was really interesting to watch a video having her talk about how you can make this simple, I believe it was a racing game, she managed to make each level, each piece of it unique despite its very minimalistic design and uh, all the, just the tiniest assets and everything they had to work with. Um, which is, it's one of those things. You have an interest, you want to learn more, and then you get these behind-the-scenes stories, and that just, I've always found it more compelling. Um, and then, you know, just going into that, I'm talking about the benefits of video games. Gaming in moderation can prove to be, like, career cross-training that's focused around fun. Uh, technology is constantly transforming medicine. Uh, nowadays, we have the use of cameras and remote-controlled tools. Uh, which control like video games with screens and controllers. So surgeons who played video games growing up perform better with fewer errors and faster completion time than surgeons without gaming experience. And obviously that includes, you know, improving your dexterity and everything. But there's also, um, in medical uses for games help people uh, overcome fear of insects or PTSD, uh, using some sort of exposure therapy like with VR stuff nowadays. Uh, there was Snow World, a first person snowballer, throwing snowballs at each other kind of thing, uh, provided pain relief, reduced need of pain meds for people. Um, and this is interesting, this one is from a study done by the University of Rochester, so, you know, relevant. Uh, improved vision for people who play shooters and action games. They can perceive fine differences and contrast. So, yeah, I mean, there are, and there there are myriad um, 
benefits to gaming. These are just a few of the ones that were kind of tied in with science and tech stuff. But yeah, um, surprisingly, it can actually help with focus on certain tasks. It can help with um, certain memorization and uh, problem solving and creativity. Obviously, you know, in moderation, not playing eight hours a day kind of thing, but yeah. Uh, they can be unexpected learning tools. <sighs> Talking about Mario games, any action or platformers or sports games that can be fun, safe, low-pressure ways of learning mechanics, physics, things of that nature. Um, and then moving on, talking about, I feel like I missed a page here, sorry. Did I not? Okay, sorry. Yeah, I ended up cutting a bunch of stuff because this is so long anyways. But yeah, going back to things I was saying before, uh, having good, kind science teachers, you know, even with a good teacher, you have something like earth science to me, it's like, yay, rocks, weather, versus, you know, her telling a student offhand, oh yeah, women tend to stop growing a year after their first menstrual period. That was more uh, intriguing to me and seemed pertinent because, you know, 14, 15 year old girl, yeah, you're wondering how tall am I going to be in this kind of thing versus, again, oh, these are level of rocks at four and over hundreds of millions of years and you're like, I'm tired, I want to go to bed, I'd rather be doing anything else, you know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, show the practical applications of science, uh, things kids might be interested in but wouldn't have considered, because that's the thing. Yeah, there were a lot of things my chemistry teacher taught us, and she's like, oh, you guys, you know, you're too trusting, you don't this and that, but I, I, I remember just thinking, like, I, I just wouldn't even have thought of that. So it's opening their eyes, opening their world, so they become more inquisitive, so they want to be... Uh, experimenting with these things and challenging them and questioning it. Uh, get them invested and curious because they'll become engaged when they start asking questions and start creating, connecting, and deconstructing ideas from themselves. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, and I know we had a AP physics teacher in my high school. I believe my sister had him because by yeah, I just took my minimum of science classes and went on to the stuff I wanted or had to have for, um, just for gen ed kind of stuff for college to get that all the way. But yeah, there was like a physics teacher in high school and he would have labs where, uh, people would be juggling or, uh, oh gosh, what were the other ones? Or like how a slinky works and how that applies to the lesson of the day kind of thing. So yeah, just like simplistic fun things. It's like, see, you can attach it with this so then it seems like really easy and kind of fun. Uh, that's brilliant. Like, major praise for any teacher who can put the extra mile in, go the extra mile to do that. Um, and then <laughs> this whole, I have a whole big section here, I'm just basically saying Pink shouldn't be a niche color. I hated pink as a kid. I knew, you know, pink or purple, it means girly. It's a certain idea of what you should be or how you should act or what you should like. And I was completely against it. I, I would not stand it. And um, definitely I was those kind of kids. But I'm still seeing. We went to toy as I'm almost 30, we went to Toys R Us because, as you guys know, it's closing because uh, the liquidation sale was there and I was like, let's let's go, let's see, you know, if there's anything cool or fun, like video games or something we could afford, of course not, but, um, you know, wanted to go and it was a huge nostalgia trip to, there was stuff they had, you know, legacy sets of Power Rangers Lords I used to have and this and then these toys and shows I used to watch and it's um, at that perfect age where it's both a nostalgia as you know getting to the be the age of the parent as all and also like letting your kids uh, be intrigued by this stuff and having them uh, join join fandom of it I guess um, but yeah I still saw oh this is the pink area with all the princess stuff and all these dolls and toys and here's the boys area with all the action figures and the gross stuff and this and that. So that's still happening. I mean, Toys R Us is uh, kind of leaving now, so it's that kind of separation isn't as... 
I don't want to say as relevant, but yeah, that's kind of going away and that's kind of symbolic. Especially when, like, Target and stores like that are trying to have, like, more of a gender-neutral toy space. Because, like, that's a thing. Girls can play with Legos, Canucks. Um, there's toys called, uh, Goldie Blocks, which I'm going to think I'm going to talk about in the next section. But yeah, a woman... Uh, wanted to get girls interested in engineering and stuff, so she kind of wanted to bridge the area between, oh, here's my interest in princesses, for girls, here's my interest in princesses, and then, oh, we can build and make and all these stuff, so, like, I could design my own castle and build it. Like, yeah, that's, that's brilliant. Um, but yeah, I loved Canucks and Legos, and, like, yeah, I didn't want just, like, the girly, frilly, foo-foo things. <laughs> that's a thing. Kids are smart. They know, like... And it's been like this for so long. So many toys, if they're considered appropriate for boys, can be considered, like, good for everyone. But then, and then there are still some toys, like, oh, there's Polly Pocket, that's for girls. Or Mighty Max, that's for boys. I know this is more like 80s and 90s stuff, but some of it's still around today. But that's a thing with, like, just plain old box of Legos or Canucks. Yeah, it doesn't have to be pink to be for girls. It's a girl's toy if a girl is playing with it, and I can't stress that enough. And same for boys, you know, just let them like anything, because the more you have them look at, um, play with stuff, the more, you know, creative they get to be, the more problem-solving skills they learn, uh, the more diverse their skill set can become. And it's just, yeah. Let me look over my notes here in case I'm missing anything. Traditionally, girls' toys are only designed to appeal to females, whereas many, if not all, toys aimed at boys are meant to appeal to everyone. And there have been steps to try to change these restrictions, since toys are meant to inspire and encourage creativity. But it is still a common thing for the boy versus girl toys, like I said. Um, in our earliest years, we are shaped to like and expect certain things and to shun others as, you know, for whatever the opposite sex is, or that's too childish, or you're going to be weird if you like that stuff. We need to embrace kids' interests, because as we saw in some of the other studies, yeah, these gender rules and these expectations start really early. <laughs> they start before the kids are in the uh, double digits, which is not fair to them. Um... We need to embrace kids' interests since this is when they get to explore and create and figure out what they like. Uh, and we shouldn't tell them, you know, what they should like. Yes, we should guide them, but we shouldn't, you know, have a preconceived notion of this is appropriate, this isn't. Because um, if I didn't have these video games growing up, you know, obviously it's a big part of creativity for me, too. I love the cell shading in Zelda Wind Waker. I loved playing those games. It was a stress release for me. It was a means of bonding with my family. It was it was play, no matter the age or no matter the time of day. Um, I would have missed out on so many hours of fun and happiness, you know, and the skills you get from these games, like I said, improved dexterity, problem solving skills, spatial reasoning, uh, memorization skills, abilities to, uh, remember more items than people who don't regularly play games. Um, so yeah, kids, let kids be kids. Let them explore, let them play. Um, early exposure, positive experiences and associations, and encouragement from adults and peers in a child's life are all key to having them develop a long-term relationship with STEM. So let's now look into what could work for girls at large.